Uh, we are going to talk about uh, how we test APIs and how we test APIs from all development all the way to production, including how we monitor APIs. Talking about ChatGPT, this is what happens when you ask ChatGPT to give you more and more and more titles, and then he comes up with something like this, right? So, so we are going to see this complete journey from everything that APIs do. Uh, I will skip who I am. I will tell you that later on. <laughs> so I come from a company called Perforce. I, I basically work in IT industry for almost 25, 25 years, and all of those years I spent some way or another working on, on QA testing and testing. Uh, I also contributed to many, many different tools. I started my career as one of the first architects on the load runner during the Mercury time, and then went all the way to contribute to Seleniums of the world and everything else. So to save time because we are running a little bit late. So what we are going to talk today about, we are going to talk about uh, how, how, how APIs are changing the way we do things, how APIs are actually our applications today, and basically how APIs are the most important thing that happens in the QA world and in application world. So what I mean by that is that APIs are becoming really a building block, so API is becoming a really applic our applications. So everything that we, everything that we do, it's actually happening on APIs. And the more, the more that your application integrates with other services, the more you can raise your brand and you can actually uh, uh, create, uh, uh, create more integrations to your systems. Now, with these potential opportunities, and basically in this API economy, the more we build integrations, the more we integrate with other, other people's applications, the more and the more, more problems are happening. And the problem is if your APIs don't work, your brand will suffer, you will have more and more problems, and you will have unhappy customers. I know certain applications that are that from the companies working with us that for a single service that didn't work correctly, the brand got the lowest scores on the Apple Store or, 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 or Google Store, and basically, and basically what happened, nobody wants to use those applications anymore. And we are talking only about a single failure. Also, recently, there was, in the whole world, there was a craziness about, uh, there was a world tour of Taylor Swift around the whole world, and basically, uh, people wanted to buy tickets in a matter of seconds, right? All the portals that were selling tickets for a European part of the tour crashed in a matter of 30 seconds since they were opening to be worked. And this is all traced to one or two services or APIs that actually didn't work. So basically, your applications are better if you integrate and build more integrations and more services, but the problem is people just want things to work seamlessly and the pressure on QA teams seems more and more every day. So with that said, we try to build some kind of analysis. What happens is API falls, and this is something usually what we show to, to high-level executives, because if I start talking about APIs from the perspective of, you know, if you get post and these other commands, they don't know what I'm talking about. But this is something that we want to show as an example what happens when the APIs fail. So if the API fails, obviously, your revenue is going to be lost. If the API fails, and you get low marks in any of the stores, basically your reputation, your brand is suffering and nobody wants to use your application. So make sure your APIs and your services works. Now, with that said, how do we actually make them work and how do we actually test them correctly and how do we make sure that everywhere from development all the way into production, this will actually work for us? So usually, if you ever had anything to do with API testing, usually you do something like this. Uh, by the way, this is built as a readout slide, so obviously we are not going to read every, every bullet point here, but when we hand it to you so you can have it as a collateral and you can read through it. But basically, when you have, when you have, uh, uh, when you have uh, 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 API that is coming and it needs to be tested, usually you start with a little bit of functional testing. This is where you test your APIs in isolation, you test small components of a a your APIs, how they, they are working. Then you move this to API functional testing. This is where QA teams come into play, and this is where we start using tools like uh, Postman's of the world. You are using REST Assured and similar open source tools to, to do some functionality of the APIs. Then we move to integration testing. This is the biggest conundrum. How do we actually test this piece? 
because in integration testing, we want to make sure that all the components work together and multiple APIs work together. Uh, so this is the next step that we do. Then obviously we need to make sure that there is, that these APIs perform well when there is a huge users using these services. So basically we need to set up some kind of performance testing, which is usually where your J meters of the world, get links, case sixes, or everything else comes into play. And then on the end, you select some kind of smoke tests that you usually run over and over again, just to make sure that the most critical parts of your APIs are tested. And once you put it in production, this is the time where you actually monitor how these APIs behave and what is the user interaction of these APIs. So this is what everybody does or should do to test the API. But the problem with this approach, there's so many gaps here that you cannot control, especially not as a testing team, and this is where, uh, this is where the problems will actually occur. So let's say you are a tester, and usually, and I hope this, yes, and you are a tester, and you have application fronted usually, and you have some backend. And this is what testers usually get, right? Now, behind the scenes, behind this backend, there is internal dependencies. So basically, you have your databases, your other services, and everything else. And you have other users using these services, or maybe they're not even deployed or built yet. So all of us face this. Then on top of all that, because we need to integrate with the third parties, there is dependencies outside of the house. So you have challenges because you need to s connect to services like, I don't know, you need to integrate with ServiceNow, you need, to inter you need to integrate with maybe Facebook, you need to integrate with Visa payment systems or anything else. So this is all that waits for you in the back end. And then on top of all that, all of these services needs to be driven by some kind of test data or data that drives these services. In many, many cases, first you don't have access to any data, or if you have access, you have maybe the wrong data or some dummy data that somebody prepared to resemble maybe production. And then the worst case scenario, sometimes people actually take production data and use it in testing, which is a big, obviously, no-no, right? So this is all what is waiting for us. So what we actually get on the end is we get a system that looks like this. Any dependencies internally, externally, doesn't have a right data, other services deployed, the other service is not deployed. Uh, uh, I want to test against Visa payment system, I want to say, test how my website is basically able to do transactions and buy goods and things like that. Obviously, Visa or American Express or any payment system will not allow me to do performance testing against their service because they can't. I want to integrate with my in-house, but my other team is telling me, oh, but we didn't deploy that service, so sorry about that. Wait for us in the sprint six that we deploy this, and maybe in sprint end eight you can do some testing. So this is all that happens, and I'm pretty sure everybody in this room had the same problems from the tester's perspective. So how we can actually change that and how we do that, and one of the products you're going to see today, and you can actually scan it there and try it immediately, it's, it's actually a solution we call in Perforce, we call BlazeMeter. Now many people, in, even in this room, heard about BlazeMeter, and if I ask anybody outside of this room or in this room what is BlazeMeter, everybody will say, oh, it's cloud platform for performance testing. Uh, that's true, but through years, BlazeMeter actually evolved into something much more than that. So basically what in the BlazeMeter world we want to resolve is, we want to give power to the testers to be able to test Everything which I already said is a problem and it's a problem statement. So we want to enable testers to do test of APIs in isolation. We want to give you an option to test APIs in integration even if the APIs and services you need to connect are not available and basically even allow you to do contract testing against that. We are going to talk a little bit what is contract testing. I'm almost certain many people know about contract testing. And then we are going to give you the right set of data that you can do this testing with. We are going to help you in test creation because we don't want you to spend time creating tests. Then we are also going to help you create negative scenarios because if you, think, if, if you test APIs only with positive and happy paths, that's not the way how your APIs will work and how your users will use those APIs. So we want to be able to give you um, an option to test APIs from positive and negative paths. And then, last but not least, once you deploy these APIs in production, we want to be able to give you an options to test their uptimes, 
to test also in production, in pre-production, their performance. And what is very important, we want also to give you an option to test their data integrity. So when I send something to the API, I want to know the data that comes back to me is a valid data that I was expecting to get from that API. Now, if you look at this, all items here, and if you don't, you are only missing here security, which is a very important piece, but usually this is done by security team. But if you look at all of these aspects here, if you want to do all this today, you will probably need an automate this process. You will probably need five, six separate tools to do all this, right? Now, very quickly introducing BlazeMeter, and we have a boot in a second boot room uh, just around the corner. And if you want to know everything about every other feature of BlazeMeter, which I'm not going to touch in very big details, but basically BlazeMeter did start as performance testing platform. But now in BlazeMeter, we can test APIs, and we can, tell uh, uh, we can test functionality of APIs. We can do contract testing in BlazeMeter. We can do service virtualization in BlazeMeter. And we can do synthetic test data generation in BlazeMeter as well. So all of these features that you need to do something like that, which we saw on previous slide, we can now support from a single platform. So let me give you a little bit of idea what that means. So the idea is that we prepare the test data that we want to use in our testing. Now, should this be a production data that is masked, uh, that is anonymized and then virtualized and used? Yes, it can. But this is something that no tester will usually do. How many of you, and I'm pretty sure you're all testers, how many of you actually work on data masking and data virtualization? Probably nobody, right? Anybody? So you do virtualization and masking yourself? Okay, masking, yes. Okay, but you have a, probably, do you have a team that helps in that effort? Exactly. So it's not your main job, right? Okay. So many testers will say to us, this is great, we want to do that, but I'm more interested to have some synthetic dummy data that I can use in my tests, and I don't need to be compliant and wait for anybody to come in. So this is the data we are talking about. We want to give the data to a tester that he can generate data for his test or her test as soon as they want, and this data will resemble production data as much as possible. So this is what data we are talking about. We want to give an option to testers to build virtual services by their own. Because in many organizations, when you want to use a virtual service or build a virtual service, there is a specific DevOps part of the team that is actually responsible for building services, right? And then we want to be able to give you to do negative testing. And we can also give you options if you need to test on mobile to give you virtual devices. So not only virtual services, but also virtual devices. So how do we do that in BlazeMeter? So the first thing in BlazeMeter that we can offer you is, is to do contract testing. How many of you here do API contract testing or know about API contract testing? OK, fair amount of people. So what is, what is an option of contract testing? Obviously, we can give you options to test APIs in isolation. That's an easy part. You can test that with many different methods and many different processes and many different tools. But to do a contract testing, contract testing is very, very dependent on, on the so-called contracts or interactions between, the, uh, between the, the provider and the consumer of that service. So basically, the consumer will send certain rules, like return codes, data that he wants to receive, what he wants to operate. And now, in, in contract testing terminology, the, it's waiting for the provider to, to provide back the response which will matching all these criteria. So this is how you test integrations. Great. Now, to do that, if I tell you I want you to test me payment options in my, uh, let's say, shopping cart, and I want you to test that contract against the payment system of Amazon, which is connected to American Express, Visa, and some other credit cards, how are you going to test that? You can't, because you can't do what the, the provider needs to send back, because you need to connect to the real life system, and this will never be allowed. Or you need to do it for some application that is done in your organization, and you need to do this integration. In many, many cases, I finish my service part, the other team is still building theirs. And I now need to wait for several sprints just to start my testing. So shift left out of the, out of the, out of the question, right? So now, to resolve this conundrum, you need to set up a simulate virtual services that in many cases will do what, uh, what the provider will actually do to the service. So basically, you will hit the virtual service 
with a request, and it will send you the response based on your matching rules. Now, does this mean you are done with your testing? No, but this will give you an opportunity to build your tests very fast and shift left, and once the real service is deployed, you will just change the endpoints against what you are testing. So this is the approach, right? Okay, so to contract testing to work, I need to have this uh, uh, virtualization in place, and I will then be able, by definitions of contract testing, to find defects early and anomalies and everything else. Okay, so the key question here is, where do I get my virtual services? And we just said that in virtual services world and in, co and in APIs world, testing of APIs is very dependent also on data. So now if I use tools like, I don't know, Mokito, Wiremock, and everything else, you heard of these tools probably, they just send me, I send a request, they send me one one-dimensional response. They send static responses and things like that. So what we want to do here is we want to have an option to create virtual services on demand. First of all, we want to build these virtual services from any definition of a service. So let's say if you, are, if you are a QA team and you have access to Swagger definitions, Open API definitions, Postman collections, any definition of a service, you can just bring in those definitions and Blaze Meter will create virtual services for you. So there is, a, sorry, what happened? Okay, sorry. So basically you don't need, you don't need to worry how these services needs to be built manually, each transaction individually. You can bring this directly from the definitions of APIs. So what we wanna do is we wanna give this into the user hands or testers hands to build services very quickly. Obviously you can bring them, you can create them manually as well. Now, once you create these services, now you want to use these services for any type of API testing, regardless if that's going to be functional, contract, or even performance testing. In many cases, when you do performance testing on APIs that includes virtual services, this fails because the APIs can, uh, services cannot sustain the load. If I run a 15, 20, 50,000 user load against the virtual service, that service will go down. So you want a service that can sustain a load like that. In the Blaze Meter world, you can run up to million five users against single service. So 1.5 million users against the virtual service that will behave like a real service. Now, you also want to have services that resemble the real condition. You probably all heard about stateful services. You all probably heard about think time in services. You talked about you, uh, de uh, dependency service to a service and everything else. Usually, virtual services don't support those features. In the case of Blaze Meter, this is all supported. You also want, when the service is finished doing the, the transactions, communication, and servicing, you want maybe to redirect to the live system because maybe you are virtualizing only one component. Blaze Meter virtual services behind the scenes has artificial intelligence that recognizes when the service is finished serving the consumer provider relationship and then redirects to the live system or sends the webhook to a system and similar things. So basically these services are built to be as possible to the live system. They are also dependent on the network virtualization. So you can actually set up a virtualization from a perspective that you can run them as 3G, 4G, 5G, low uh, Wi-Fi, bad 3G, bad 5G. So you can see how your application behaves when you have actually, when you, when you actually have an, uh, wrong network conditions. So maybe you have some pocket losses and things like that. So that's all available in these services. Now, I didn't mention one thing that these services now also need. I want to make these services, especially for my contract testing, I want to make, I want to make these services uh, dynamic. Anybody has any idea what dynamic mock service or virtual service means? Okay, so the virtual service that is dynamic means that it can be driven by different data. So every time I hit that service, I want to get a different data. But I want to use data parameterization in request, but I also want to get the data parameterization for the response. So I can actually also parameterize the response body of a service. So let's say if I want to, going back to the example of payment systems, if I send a payment of $100, I want to receive the service, consume that $100, and payment of $100 is okay. If I send another number, and then I can choose different users who are sending that payment, right? So to do that, you need to have an option to generate synthetic data that will drive your tests and your services based on any rules of data you want to specify. So let's say if you are working, if you are working in different parts of the world, 
test data or synthetic data for rules for setting data, let's say for date of birth, uh, time and date, uh, values, uh, kilogram versus, ver uh, versus ton, oh sorry, kilo, uh, sorry, uh, miles versus kilometers. Um, all of these things are different from different parts of the world. Social security numbers, driver's license numbers. You need to generate all, data, all that data. And this thing can do exactly that, create a synthetic data based on rules of production data. Okay, and it can also generate that data on different languages. So you can have this in Italian, you can have it in simplified Chinese or any other language you want. So now, when I have a virtual service and I have an API test, I can push the same data model into an API test and into virtual service, but I can also orchestrate it into the real system. So I can have data consistency across the board. Now, if you have data in the system already and you can use that, great. But many times, me as a tester, I don't have any data, nobody provides this to me, and I need to wait for something to happen. Here, I have everything in my own hands. I can generate this data very quickly, fill it in virtual service, and write my test against the virtual service. I can start that in sprint one or two. Then when the real system is deployed, I can just switch the endpoints and test against that. So that's the beauty of this kind of testing. Okay? Now, we understand that creating data models can be very complicated, and because these data models and this data creation is built on top of JavaScript with different seed lists and similar options, many, many of our customers said to us, okay, you know what, it's a little complicated, there's so much coding and everything else. So we actually created AI-driven test data generator where you will actually describe in English what you want of data, and I-driven creator will create the data for you. So I know the previous session you talked about ChatGPT, but basically imagine I go to ChatGPT and I say, I want data that has first name, last name, at something.com as an email address, so create me data for first, last name, user, American names, and email addresses that finish with gmail.com. So if you describe that, like that, this generator will create that data for you and that data model. And then you can have as many records of unique data as you want. We can generate millions of rows and it will always be generated uh, for the new, uh, new data. So that AI-driven data creator helps you feed the data with it. But also what it does, it also helps you create negative scenarios. So if you now create, and I'm going back to the example of Visa because it's very common, Let's say I need to have a visa number. I need to have a CSV number, which is a three-digit number on my visa card. I need to have first last name, and I need to have an expiration date of my visa card. Every credit card in the world works like that. Now, what if I want to test with wrong entries, with wrong visa numbers, blocked visa numbers, negative scenarios, and so forth? So this thing can actually create negative data from the positive data that you created. So this is, uh, this is the opportunity as well that you can do with this, uh, with this uh, option. Why do you do that? Many people do this, and this is a very big trend now, apart from the IE and everything we are talking about. This is used for chaos testing, because you want to test all the negative and unhappy parts that your users can do. Okay? So this is what we help you with, and basically help you identify and build this data. Now, once you have the data, you have your virtual services, you have your contract testing, your performance testing, and everything set up in, uh, in BlazeMeter, you get something like this. So you will actually get, you will get the data that you can use in your front-end application testing, you will get the data that you will drive your API tests with, you will get an option to build a virtual service, and you will be able to feed that virtual service with the same data from your tests, and then you can also feed that data into the system under test. So basically, you will get data consistency for all of your testing, you will get virtual services for all of your testing, and you will also get your test scripts, your API contract tests, your performance tests, and everything else. We can actually bring a definition of API, build contract API tests, build from that automatically performance tests and also virtual service without you touching anything. Directly from the API definition. So all of that, right? So instead of getting something like this, so basically how 
we, we saw this on the very beginning, we want to bring you something like this. We want you to have your front end, back end, whatever you need to test, in this case, testing APIs, communications. And then we want to give you a test data and virtual services and all the options for testing. We can also give you virtual devices. If you want to know more about that, it's our secondary platform called Perfecto, which allows you to test on real mobile devices and also virtual as an emulated devices. But this is not part of the conversation today. So the bottom line is we want to give the tester everything behind the scenes that you need to test your application. I also saw in many of our customers, I will give you an example, where after they build a virtual service and fill it with test data, then they use that virtual service to orchestrate, the, orchestrate their application to use that virtual service as a part of application. So when the UI tester comes in and he needs to build UI smoke tests, he hits that point, virtual service feeds the application, the UI tester doesn't even know if that's a virtual service or real service, but he can proceed or she can proceed with their work. Otherwise, it will be non-available, 404, whatever. You can even use it to that manner as well. You can also use it to run your unit tests against it. Once you have the endpoint of a virtual service, you can run tests against it from anywhere you want. Also, what we implemented recently is that we want virtual service to be updatable without stopping the service. So if I'm a programmer and I, have, I want to add more transactions to a virtual service, but somebody else is already running against that service pro, uh, performance test, for example. Now, in the past, I need to stop that service to update so I can mess with somebody else's work. Now I can update with new transactions and new data the service without stopping it. It will just automatically update. Okay? So we can do that. You cannot change the service and transaction that is already there because that will... Uh, corrupt the service, but adding new ones will not stop the service. So this is available. Okay, so now we saw how we can do functional, performance, virtualization, and all types of testing with, with, within one platform. And now what is left is, okay, now we want to move those services into production. Okay? So now when we move it to production, what is going to happen in production? We need to worry about uptime of a service. So basically, we want to know if this service, when it goes to production, is up and down 24-7. So we need to know how does it serve our customers. Then we want to know the performance of that service. I want to know how many seconds or milliseconds or, God forbid, minutes it takes to receive something and send the request back. And then when it sends the request, I want to know if it's sending the request in the right way. Is it data integrity is not corrupted? So I want to know all this to production. So somebody will say, okay, if you want to do all that, you can use an APM tool. And I agree 100%. You can use APM tools like Dynatrace, New Relic, Datadog, all of these tools. And most of these tools that I mentioned, or all of them, are our partners and they integrate with our solution. But how this differs from that is we are talking about active monitoring versus passive monitoring. If I put these APM tools, they are monitoring my services in production all the time and waiting for customers to do something on the service to get the information and everything else. What is different here is, and why we think it's a good combination to combine active and passive monitoring, is that in our world, we choose the smoke tests we created for API testing, and we choose the most critical ones and run them as monitors against the production on a regular cadence. So not waiting for something to happen, we are always pinging the service and testing the most critical parts. So what I mean by that is that we set up a monitors which are based on these tests that we told about we can create, and then these monitors will hit the service on a regular basis and build us a dashboard 24-7, 30 days in a month, 12 months in a year, how this service behaves. And if it fails, I can drill down and see how the service is based. Now, as I mentioned, to build these tests and these, these, these monitors, I can use any definition of an API to build it. So if you use any tool now and you want to build an API test or a monitor test, you will need to type get this, post that, or whatever, any tool. Now, what I'm saying is don't stop using any tool you like. Use your Postman, use your Swagger, use whatever you want to use. Use uh, Rest Assured, SOAP UI. I don't mind. And we will bring those in as is and create negative and positive scenarios that you can use as functional tests, as contract tests, and also monitors. So we will not change your work. We are not, our goal is not to lock you in any proprietary system that we have 
Use as you use, but we will give you much more flavor to test your APIs. So that's the idea. Now, once we run those APIs, we are going to build you dashboards, and these da dashboards, dashboards are actually going to contain all the information of your, about your API and about your health about your API. Now, one of my biggest customers, and by the way, I come from Europe, so sorry about my accent. I just flew 20 plus hours to get here. So, so I work in our European office in a beautiful city of Prague in Czech Republic. And one of my biggest customers is, for example, Tesco. And Tesco is the, one of the largest retail stores in the world, and especially in the UK. So Tesco, when they monitor and test their APIs, they use this solution, N plus APM integration. And per one single day, they run 3.9 to 4.9 million user monitors over and over again through this solution against all of their retail stores. Because they want to make sure that they accessible that their uh, um, accessibility and also uh, uh, how, uh, how, um, sorry, this, how service is available goes over at least 95%. This is their threshold. And all of these measures will give you that. Now, if you have any problems, you can also drill down into these solutions. So it will show you, you see in this particular slide, how many milliseconds it took to upload, what is the experience of API, how, how the user is consuming it. Then you will also be able to see, is the API returning the right data? Because you can write any assertion and any matching that you want. So you can say it must match this, use regular expressions, use magic strings, anything you want. And then this will be your test, but it will also be your monitor once it goes into production. And last but not least, I want to mention that everything I just show here can be deployed on-prem. So if you want to test in pre-production, you want to test on your QA systems, that's available. Or everything can be SaaS and also can be used to test in production in SaaS environments. And not only that is, what is also important when you test and monitor APIs in production, maybe you are a big enterprise that has customers from all over the world. I'm pretty sure it's the case of many of you. So what we can do is we can run these tests and monitors from 55 different geographic locations in the world. And we can simulate that these loads and tests are coming from consumers all over the world. So this is also very important if you are a big multinational or uh, in international company, to be correct. And I'm finishing with this camera, and I think I'm on time, to be honest. So this is the last slide I want to leave you with, or actually one more after this. So with our solution, we want to give you that you can really trust in your APIs and make sure that these APIs work properly and that you have less and less defects. And we want to give this testing back to the QA team. So we don't want QA team to wait for somebody, oh, can you deploy this for me so I can test it? Oh, do you have a right data? Can you send it to me? And everything else. So all of these things we want to give you. Now, I also recommend that you come to our booth if you have time uh, because there is a solutions that I didn't cover here where we can talk about it. Now somebody will ask, okay, if you are already able to work with synthetic data, can you really work also with real data and mask it and virtualize it and everything else? Yes, and we have a specific platform for, for that called Delphix. So if you want to know more how all of these tests can also work with the real production data, which is now masked, synthesized, and everything else, and virtualized, we also have solutions how to do that. But the idea is, Trust in your APIs, be able to do performance on them, make sure they work scalability-wise, be sure they work integrated with each other, and to be able to do all this at one single platform is really changing the game. So you don't need many, many, many different platforms. If you want to know more, uh, this will be shared uh, presentation. These are all links. We have, we have uh, published trainings which are free of charge. You can take them about all of these tools and frameworks, how they work, and also all the open source. Okay, thank you so much. And I'm going to ask one question.